Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 51 of our Starbase Weekly Updates. My name is Jeb, and I'll be your host for today's episode. Starting off at Starbase on Friday, the chopsticks were raised up the orbital launch tower in preparation for another round of testing at the launch site. As the orbital tank farm spooled up, SpaceX performed a full speed test of the main booster quick disconnect on the orbital launch mount. Next, frost formed on Booster 7's liquid oxygen tank as propellant was loaded into the vehicle which then performed a spin prime test of one of its Raptor engines. Following the spin prime test, SpaceX performed a second full speed test of the booster quick disconnect as they worked to finalize launch procedures ahead of the orbital flight test. Saturday at the Sanchez site, the tipless ship nose cone test article was lifted and placed onto a test stand as crews worked to prepare it for stress testing. On Tuesday, the launch site was once again closed for testing. This time, it was Ship 26's turn in the spotlight, as the flapless and tileless Starship underwent its first round of cryogenic proof testing. That evening, Ship 27's aft section was lifted onto the turntable in the high bay in preparation for stacking with the vehicle's completed forward section. Then, late Wednesday morning, the forward section was lifted into the air and placed on top of the waiting aft section so they could be welded together. That afternoon, the overhead door on the payload processing building opened and the white Starlink loading box was rolled out and parked nearby. Inside the payload building, this box is filled with Starlink satellites. The box is then driven to a waiting starship and then lifted by crane so the blue tarp covered opening is aligned with the payload door on the ship. And then, the Starlinks are transferred into the ship. Thursday, Ship 25 was lifted off Test Stand B and placed back on its transport stand. During its time on the test stand, the only testing seen by the ship was some flap actuation testing. Over at the orbital launch mount, launch preparations continued as a new piece of blast shielding was installed on the underside of the booster quick disconnect hood. That afternoon, another piece of shielding was lifted and installed on the side of the launch mount to help protect all the systems on the outside of the mount. Back over at the Sanchez site, trucks began delivering parts of the Buckner LR-1750 crane which is being built near the rocket garden. In the ring yard, one of the lifting points was removed from a booster forward section, which may be an indicator that the section is scrap. A short time later, Booster 10's thrust section was moved through the ring yard to the mega bay following a long stay in 10 to 1. Unfortunately, it appears that this move was short-lived, as that night, the thrust section was rolled back through the ring yard to tent 1. Late that night, one of Booster 7's HPU covers was lifted and reinstalled on the vehicle now that crews had finished swapping out that hydraulic power unit. Meanwhile, Ship 25 was rolled down Highway 4 as it returned to the build site where it was parked over near the mid-bay. The fate of this ship is unclear at this time. Switching over to the Cape, on a cloudy Friday night, Falcon 9 Booster B-1077 launched the Inmarsat 6 F-2 mission from Space Launch Complex 40. This satellite is destined for geostationary orbit, where it can help provide communication services for maritime and air traffic. Saturday afternoon, B-1062, which recently launched the Starlink Group 5-4 mission, was lifted and placed on the transporter for its trip back to Hangar X. On Sunday, fairing recovery vessel Doug towed a shortfall Gravitas out to sea in preparation for recovery operations for the Starlink Group 6-1 launch. The action continued for SpaceX's marine assets on Monday, as Bob returned to Port Canaveral having successfully recovered both fairing halves from the Inmarsat 6 F2 launch. The next day, Tug Crosby Skipper followed Bob into port, towing Just Read the Instructions, which was carrying Falcon 9 booster B-1077 on board. That afternoon, the booster was lifted off the drone ship and placed onto the dock to be prepared for transport back to SpaceX's refurbishment facilities. Early Tuesday afternoon, NASA's Gulfstream GV landed at the shuttle landing facility, having transported the four members of NASA and SpaceX's Crew-6 mission from Houston. NASA astronaut Stephen Bowen will be the mission's spacecraft commander, and this will be his fourth trip to space. It will be the first spaceflight for the other three members of the crew, mission pilot NASA's Warren Hoberg and mission specialist Sultan al Nayadi from the United Arab Emirates and Roscosmos's Andrei Fedyayev. Sultan al Nayadi will be just the second Emirati astronaut to go to space, and the first to ride in SpaceX's Dragon capsule. The mission is currently set to launch Monday morning at 1.45 Eastern Time. 
And that does it for this week's coverage of Starbase and Cape Canaveral, Florida, brought to you by Lab Padre. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week.